All right, let's kick this off. Um, hello, everyone. Thanks so much for joining us today um, from all around the world uh, for this very special webinar. Uh, we have a lot of surprises for you today, and we're super excited you're here with us because you'll get an exclusive glimpse into a new and exciting thing we've been working on in secret for some time now. Um, without giving too much away, we invite you to stick with us till the end because we prepared something very special for you. Uh, that will get you excited about all of this. But before we get into it, I just wanted to let you know that we'll hold a live Q&A session at the end of the webinar. So feel free to send your questions in the Q&A box here on Zoom uh, during the entire discussion. Um, and now, without further ado, let me introduce you to your host. Uh, with us today, we have Andre Bencic, uh, CEO of Tenderly, joining us from San Francisco, Bogdan Habich, our CTO, and Nenad Vitorovic, developer relations at Tenderly, both joining us from our development hub in Belgrade, Serbia. So to kick us off, Andre, can you give us a hint about this secret new thing we're launching today and what we'll be learning about? Of course, Danila, and thank you. Thank you for the introductions. <clears throat> and thank you all for joining us for this very special event. So to give you, to give you an idea of what we'll be talking about today, uh, you know, we'll first start taking a look back at what we've built with Tenderly so far. Uh, then we'll jump into, into the, the fun stuff that Neela has been mentioning and talk about the new product we are releasing. And finally, we'll finish things off with that demo and QA session to answer any of the questions you might have after this presentation. So from day one, Tenderly has been built so to be in service of Web3 builders. We discovered early that the, what truly drives us is helping and enabling others to succeed. And what better space to choose than the world of Web3? One of the first problems we tackled is um, in this frustrating uh, state of Web3 developer experience uh, is how easy it is to work with, uh, with smart contracts on a daily basis. So we spent a lot of time and energy into making that experience better. If you've ever used our Tenderly debugger, you've, you've for sure experienced the relief of not having to play Where's Waldo with, my bug, with your bugs ever again. Building on top of that, we've also dabbled in creating the building blocks, helping devs do more with their smart contracts. As we grew, Tenderly also grew to provide new ways of interacting with smart contracts directly in your dApps. Our simulation platform has become indispensable re an indispensable resource for providing transparency and predictability in the dApp user experiences uh, all over the world. Finally, uh, what's very important to mention is that we couldn't have done any of this were it not for our users and developers willing to tirelessly provide us with their feedback and suggestions on how to improve the product. It's some of these conversations that spark the uh, as, as far as I'm concerned, some of the most impactful parts of Tenderly today. For that, we're forever grateful, and we're looking for many more of these conversations in, in, in the years to come. So that brings us to today. Right now, Tenderly touches most parts of the DAP development process, with the Tenderly Visual Debugger, a Transaction Simulator, and Gas Profiler, all industry first. We have transformed the way smart contract development is done. We've also made sure that all the power of Tenderly can be accessed with as little effort as possible. Because Tenderly watches and processes every single transaction coming through the network, you can retroactively monitor and debug any transaction from any block instantly with no setup required. And lastly, we made all the power and data of the Tenderly platform available to you to our APIs that we affectionately call Infrastructure 3.0. With, uh, with these APIs, we've been able to provide powerful building blocks that developers can leverage across their stack. Whether it's integrating our Forex API to power the internal testing infrastructure or plugging it directly into your dApps, Tenderly has become an important part of many leading projects in the space. Bringing it back to the fundamentals, what Tenderly does is essentially make your life easier. Tenderly helps you build better smart contracts in less time and definitely much less stress and anxiety. Tenderly also helps you work effectively as a team with a single tool serving you as a mission control for all your smart contracts and on-chain activity. Finally, Tenderly helps you build better dApp uh, better, better DAP experiences. The industry standard has moved beyond just doing DAPs and, uh, that use smart contracts and user interfaces on top. Tenderly's Infra 3.0 offering uh, and building blocks make it trivial to build complex experiences on top of your smart contracts. And now we can get to the fun stuff. It's my pleasure to share with you what we have been working on in secret this past year. Everybody say hello to the Tenderly Web3 Gateway, our very old node as a service offering. A super fast, reliable way of connecting to blockchain networks seamlessly integrated with the rest of the Tenderly platform that you know and love. As with anything we do at Tenderly, we didn't want to release just another JSON RPC node and call it a day. We wanted to do it properly and set up our developers for success with an explosion of new functionality we have in store for them. Just like we did with our own custom Tenderly virtual machine, we analyzed the inner workings of a single blockchain node and completely rewrote it from the ground up 
to create something truly unique. We ended up with a highly optimized, tailor-made distributed node serving our needs and the needs of our developers perfectly for years to come. With the, with the Tenderly Web3 Gateway, our developers can enjoy 100% data consistency, lower cost and no maintenance required, all that with up to eight times faster blockchain data retrieval compared to other solutions. Uh, so to, to, to wrap it all up, uh, you know, what's, what's most important is that the Web3 Gateway is the only solution in the space that uh, is fully integrated into the Tenderly ecosystem that we have today. We have already built a powerful suite of developer tools working for, for working with smart contracts. We are already tracking all the smart contracts in real time with absolute precision. We have already exposed our core technology to our APIs. Now we've tied it all together with the Web3 Gateway, completing the Tenderly platform promise of delivering you all the tools, services, and infrastructure you need to build, apps, to build your dApps successfully. When we say Tenderly is an end-to-end -end development platform, we truly mean that. So while all of this is super exciting to me, I know you're eager to learn more on what makes Tenderly Web3 Gateway tick under the hood for that. I'm handing the mic over to Bogdan, my co-founder and CTO. So Bogdan, please take it away. Andre, thank you for passing the torch, not the microphone, as this is a live thing. Hi, everyone. As Andre mentioned, my name is Bogdan, the CTO of Tenderly, and I'm the one that's going to show charts, I guess. So other than that, I really like starting these things with a bit of a historical context. As Andre mentioned, four years ago when we started out, the tooling was also abysmal in this space. So what we did is take the Ethereum virtual machine, decompose it completely, and instrument it in the cracks that, that became from those that decomposing itself. So after composing it back up, that's what makes Tenderly tick. That's the secret sauce. So when we started doing the node as a service offering, or as we like to call it, Web3 Gateway, we initially tried to do the standard thing that most people do, stand up as many nodes horizontally as possible. But we saw numerous issues such as data consistency, the uh, problems with speed, sending transactions, and also doing execute calls to the chain itself. So how does the decomposed Tenderly Web3 Gateway node actually work? Here, we're gonna see a chart. So on the left, we have the Ethereum mainnet. And the first part that you see lit, lit up here is the Tenderly platform you know and love. So we sync in real time with all of the nodes across the globe that we have, and we put it into the Tenderly virtual machine. Let's call it TVM here. So when each transaction is processed, a bunch of different Tenderly services and tools give you a better life. What does this actually mean? This is the part where all of the alerts are fired off, all of your web reactions are fired, and all of the analytics is aggregated. This was the heart of Tenderly so far, but we need to be, be, make a better, better, bigger one. So let's talk about the storage layer. Instead of having multiple nodes and then reading from each one, having data consistency issues, we took a completely different approach. We wrote a custom storage layer distributed around the globe where we can basically write to it once and be sure no matter where you are, all of the reads are consistent and even more important, extremely fast. We're gonna see how much in a bit. And finally, we have the JSON RPC layer. This is the layer that you will be probably mostly interfacing on. So what does this actually mean? If you send an ETH call, as an example, the Tenderly virtual machine will process the transaction, use the underlying storage engine and return to the data to you extremely fast. We also have orchestrators that can theoretically infinitely scale horizontally for as many readers as needed. And then we have also a very custom write layer, which broadcasts your transactions to the network itself. So one interesting thing here is benchmarks. <clears throat> so this is the Convex Shutdown community benchmark. This is a community benchmark that you can run on your own. So here we have a benchmark running on a digital ocean droplet in San Francisco. To the left, you can see the Tenderly results, and to the right, you can see the current standard node offering. As you can see, Tenderly is almost twice as fast as that one. But I said globally quite a lot up until to this point. Let's look at Europe. We can see from Frankfurt, when we run the same benchmark, Tenderly is six times faster. So the engineers in the crowd probably inferred something. <clears throat> I'm glad to say Tenderly is one of the first node providers in the world that gives a global data access to a node as a service product. Right now, we're deployed in Central US and Western Europe, but soon we're gonna follow with Western and Eastern US and then Asia as well. Why is this extremely important? It's extremely important because no matter where the users of your DAP are, you can be assured that you're, they're getting the fastest access to a node. So you must be thinking right now, all of this is great, it's fast, it's reliable, it scales infinitely, but it must cost a lot. And I'm glad to say that you're wrong maybe here. So, just as everything else with Tenderly, we have a free tier and then including it with the whole Tenderly platform, making it the best free plan for an end-to-end -end platform in the space. 
But also I would like to announce, and this is the, this is the surprise that Nilo mentioned, we have an early adopter plan where we guarantee for the first thousand users that there's no other company providing plan, a plan as this one. And what's even more important, we'll honor this plan until the existence of Tenderly. So we talked about getting access, very fast access to a node, but also Andre mentioned we're an end-to-end -end holistic developer platform. So how can this tie in, for example, with simulations? The whole platform itself is completely composable. For example, if you're using simulations, you can simulate key scenarios and improve confidence. InstaDev uses this to make an amazing onboarding experience when you're coming to InstaDev. Another way is the safe team, what they did with simulations. They give you a way to preview any transactions that you're assigning in your multi-sig, saving errors that can be up, upwards of a million dollars on, on a single click. And then finally, for example, Yield uses tenderly forks the whole simulated environment to test our governance proposal protocols that can make millions of dollars of losses if mishandled correctly. So you can see that the whole platform is completely integrated. And then I guess this being a very, very interesting demo coming up, you can see teams using tenderly. And I think tenderly is a gateway very much intended to being one of the greats. So coming to the demo, we have been just telling you about this, but let me introduce Nenad who can show you. So hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Nenad. I am developer relations engineer in Tenderly, otherwise known as the guy who will show you some code and the tools in Works. Um, today, I will be demonstrating two things. We gathered to talk about gateways. So I will, of course, demonstrate how to use Tenderly Web3 Gateway from the dashboard to quickly query the data from the network. And also, I will be demonstrating how Tenderly platform serves you throughout the development process. Of course, we'll be focusing on a tiny piece of the whole thing because we're, of course, uh, time limited. So as with any demo, I will share my screen. <clears throat> and here we are in the uh, Tenderly dashboard on the Web3 Gateway page. So the first thing that uh, we should uh, say is that every single project gets its special and own gateway to access the blockchain. And on top of uh, this page, you can see the list of networks that you can access through gateway. Of course, Mainnet, Gorli, and Sepolia, and these two will, of course, be removed at some point. Uh, important thing to note is that this RPC URL also contains your unique key, unique port gateway we're looking at, uh, meaning that it should be kept secretly. And if it leaks, like it's leaking uh, for me right now, we have uh, uh, a reactive tool. Uh, you can reset your access key so nobody can use your resources uh, but you. And the third thing that's, uh, that's clicky in here in the dashboard is actually the request builder. So we made a small request builder. You can select a network you want to query and you can call any of uh, the methods uh, that do either reading or some, uh, you can do ETH call basically that does, uh, that calls smart contract methods, but you cannot do any writes from the, from the dashboard. And of course, uh, in here, you can click the send request and we can show you the actual result of reading the state of blockchain uh, according to the function that you've selected. So here I have selected uh, get block by number, and this is the output actually giving us the content of the latest block on the blockchain, uh, on the mainnet. And the last uh, bit is actually these uh, are actually these snippets. You can copy them and paste it to your project. So if you're a JS based developer, you can copy Ether JS code. If you want to do, do it in Bash, there's also, also this Web3Py gives you uh, the Python version of it. And uh, the one last bit that is sort of uh, helping out in removing friction is actually ETH unit converter. So more often than not, you have to do this. And instead of leaving the dashboard, you have this very simple but very needed tool at your disposal. And that's what you can actually do with Web3 Gateway from, uh, from the dashboard. Uh, and uh, you can use this link to actually uh, connect either your DAP or your smart contract framework, such as Hardhead, uh, that deploys contracts, operates on them, and stuff like that. And in the spirit of that, let me 
go into my hardhead project over here. So I will actually not be deploying any contracts right now because that takes uh, some time uh, when it comes to test nets. Uh, I will show some transactions later, but now I wanna show you a contract that we'll use for the second thing I want, I want to uh, demonstrate today. So we spoke about Tenderly uh, uh, services and tools helping apps um, uh, in terms of user experience, but there's also something that aids developer experience. And this is just for, uh, for uh, newcomers in the crowd. It's uh, practically a wallet that has several owners and the owners can submit some transactions that hang out in the wallet until there's enough number of confirmations. Actually, there's a minimum number. And once you have enough confirmations, one of the owners ha can execute the transaction. So this is the contract that, uh, that we're dealing with here. And now the, the part of the developer process I want to illustrate here is actually testing. So Hardhead has a pretty nice uh, support for writing tests of your contracts. And one of my tests have failed. So I'll go to the Tenderly dashboard, and this is the actual transaction uh, that resulted in a failure. And as you can see here, we have insufficient number of confirmations. All right, so we didn't have enough owners agreeing that this is a fine trans transaction. So this is the function that's been invoked, and we can open up the input data and actually see that this is the variable name that this function uh, is actually the argument name that this function is receiving. All right, but this doesn't help us actually figure out what went wrong. So down here, I'll go into uh, the debugger. And as you can see here, this require failed. It says there's insufficient, um, insufficient confirmations. So it's comparing uh, the number of confirmations of this particular transaction number four uh, with the number of confirmations required. So to understand what's going on in here, oops, to understand what's going on in here, uh, we could either get each individual storage slot uh, manually, or we could use this candy, uh, candy tool called Evaluate Expression, which uh, you're probably familiar with uh, from traditional debuggers. And we can actually paste here any valid solidity code and it will, well, evaluate. So when I hit enter, it'll use the smart contract field and also the uh, transaction that we're dealing with. So indeed, this condition is false. And to examine individual parts, I'll just remove this and let's see how many confirmations this transaction got. It's two. And let's see what is the number of confirmations required. And it also says two. So you would expect that a transaction with two confirmations while having two confirmations required should pass. And this means that we have a logical bug in here. So actually we need not the greater than sign, but greater than or equal to. So the number of confirmation has to be greater than or equal to the number of confirmations required. This is an assumption that this will fix the bug. So to validate that this is true, we could either go back to the code base, paste the fix, run all the tests again, and so on. But we can do even uh, we can do something even fa even faster. We could simulate execution of that transaction against the code with the fix in it. So I clicked uh, the re-simulate button, and I'll go to edit contract source. So this is the source of the contract we just debugged, and I'll find the execute transaction method. And yeah, it, it's a big bug, so I'll just add equal here, and I'll apply changes. So when I hit simulate transaction, it will execute everything with the same inputs, only the code is chain, changed. And here we can see, yes, it's a validation that our fix uh, is actually the one that we were looking for. So keep this thought, when we do the fix, we have to add an equal sign, not easy, to, uh, not hard to, uh, to remember. But before I actually go into the test, I want to uh, just give some attention to this word over here. It says this is a simulated transaction. Um, this is because this, this transaction doesn't actually, isn't actually coming from a network. 
it's coming from a tenderly fork. All right, uh, let's take a step back and let's talk about what a fork is and why did we use it. So a fork is a lightweight network, so to, so to speak. Uh, in here, we took Gorli and we made a fork from Gorli in Tenderly from this very block. This means that whatever transactions this fork receives, they will be only simulated. It behaves like a network, so you do get an execution layer. You get to see how transaction behaves, uh, and you do get some storage. So actually, all of these transactions, actually, their their simulations are persisted. And the good thing about forks, since it behaves like a network, it also exposes a JSON RPC URL that you can use for wherever you need um, wherever you need a lightweight and very fast network. Now, why did we use a fork? Well, we used it in our hardhead tests. Uh, so in here, um, when we run the hardhead tests, they actually rely on the Tenderly network that uses a fork RPC we just saw a moment ago. Uh, this means that uh, when I run the tests um, on the Tenderly network, all of those tests, and there's five or six of them, each of them having three or four transactions, actually use Fork as a stub network. You can think of it like that. And uh, because it's a very fast execution, you can see all those tests finished before I actually finish the sentence. So this is the failing test. And let me go back into the contract. And here it is, multi-seed wallet. And just to confirm everything is fine, I will find the execute transaction function here. And this is the requiring question. And you remember we needed to add an equal sign. So this should fix it. And once again, I'll run the test and it should all be pretty fine. Uh, waiting for it to complete. And not yet. All right, six tests passing. That's awesome. And to complete the story, all these tools that we've seen look absolutely the same when you're dealing with transactions coming from a real network. So these are transactions that came in from Gorli. And here you can see that the entire set of tools is absolutely the same, whether you use a fork or not. And this is an example of how you can use Tenderly's tools such as forks to support engineering practices within the Web3 development process and develop your products with less, less anxiety, add changes with more confidence, and uh, just live a higher quality of life. And that's it for the live demo. So I hope you've seen something useful. All right. Thanks so much, Nana, for this really in-depth demo and for showing us how Web3 Gateway fits into the Tenderly development platform and how Web3 Gateway smoothly integrates with other Tenderly tools. Um, amazing stuff. So everything that Nana showed you um, can be found in our documentation, which is also live. We'll share a link in the chat um, so you can check it out there as well. Um, now let's start the Q&A part of the webinar and we'll try to get to as many questions as we can. So the Q&A uh, section is still open. Feel free to drop your questions in the Q&A box here on, on Zoom. So let's dive into the question. So the first question, I think um, this one is for you, uh, Bogdan. So who did you benchmark against? Sure. So I think as an engineer by trade, it's better off showing and not telling. So a thing that you can do, I mentioned it's a convex community benchmark. What we did, it's a benchmark that tests how good data access is for a particular node. It's a real life word through a use case. So what you can do is you can go to the GitHub repository that we're going to share in an email later on, and you can try it around the world and compare yourself. What we did talking to a, a lot of engineers in the space and all of the top teams in the space, we saw which other node providers or which in-house solutions they use, and we benchmark against those, and these are the results that we got. All right, thanks so much. Uh, I have one more question here. Um, so how do you see Web3 Gateway evolving in the future? I think this one is for you, Anthony. Yeah, of course. Well, uh, the Web3 Gateways that, uh, that are available today, uh, the way we see it are just the foundational point that we can use to build off of and integrate 
uh, and combine the, the, the tooling and the, the offering that we've, that we've had so far. Uh, so even to start, even to start, we from day one we integrate with uh, with uh, some of other other tooling like Web3 Actions um, and giving you the giving you the debugging tools uh, at your disposal from day one. But this is just scratching the surface of what we can really do to empower developers when building DApps. So um, as I mentioned, you know, even though even though our roots are in DevTools, uh, it's the Infra 3.0 that is the uh, much more exciting next chapter for Tenderly that uh, most uh, very cool announcements will be will be coming from uh, following following this one. Cool. I see a question and that also, I really like. Uh, sorry, sorry. Go. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, no, no. <laughs> okay, it's good to see that this is actually live. <laughs> so uh, I see a question that I like. It says, "Can we integrate it using Hardkit VS Code and Foundry?" So Hardkit and Foundry is as easy as dropping in a link and suddenly you get all of the benefits of the Web3 gateways and then of the Tenderly platform itself as well, especially for Hardkit where you have a plugin, it's a breeze to do it. And then for VS Code, again, if you're using any of these developer frameworks, it's very easy to use them inside of VS Code as well, combined with the rest of the Tenderly suite. So I hope that answers your question. And there's a, I think there's a follow-up on the Roadmap -y, roadmap -y things for for Web three gateway. Uh, when are we planning to to add other networks such as uh, Binance Chain, for example? So uh, we kick things off with the Ethereum network and its test nets. Uh, but uh, the cool thing about the the Web three gateway uh, and the broader Tenderly platform is that we already support twenty plus networks um, out of the gate. So following up on those would be. Uh, is is a much easier much easier channel challenge than starting from scratch. So even though we don't have a, a public roadmap yet on on where we will be expanding there, uh, it's definitely something that is uh, on our crosshairs and and will happen uh, will happen uh, at some point for sure. All right, fantastic. You guys keep monitoring the 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 Q and A there. Um, yeah, it's I'll, funny. I'll, I'll it's just... like it's like front running each other for a question. <laughs> yeah, I found, I, I found a, I found an interesting one. Just to jump in here, uh, can you answer this one very quickly? So, can you give us uh, an example of how Gateway integrates with with the rest of the Tenderly platform? Oh, I can do this one. It was a very fun one. So, <laughs> if, if, if you know, uh, we have Web Three Actions as a product. It's like a serverless platform uh, that runs when something happens on chain. So, us being an integrated platform. Out of the gate, when you're running, uh, when you're typing out the Web3 action, it's automatically integrated with the Web3 gateway. So you don't have to do anything. You suddenly have an instant connection to the node. Okay, fantastic. Are you guys seeing um, any other question there in the in the Q and A box? Yeah, there's a security one, I guess. Uh, yeah. So a question is, are there any security tools to detect flaws, bugs in code, uh, like Slither or, or sorts? And is there a fuzzing tool uh, on the roadmap for us? So even though we don't uh, consider Tenderly as a security tool, Tenderly is very useful in the hands of security people. So even though we don't directly support fuzzing uh, as a ready to go packaged up feature, uh, we've seen we've seen teams uh, you know integrate our forks and simulation APIs to really create that fuzzing environment for them, which uh, and from my point of view gives you even more power because Tenderly as a platform is generic; it doesn't really care about your uh, particular use case, so you can really mold it uh, and shape it in the way that best uh, best uh, supports your project. Cool. I see a spicy one. So, what are the limitations of the system? Uh, so we tested it out with a bunch of different things. We're actually using this internally to run our own software. And as Andre mentioned, we tried to solve our own problem. It's like scratch your own edge type of thing. And then we released it to the public. Again, building something with this great of a surface needs help for everyone. So if you encounter any bugs, which you hopefully won't, or any performance things, do report them. Although I do urge you run all of the benchmarks, try out your use cases. And the only way we can make this even better is all together. And I can pick it up with uh, with one from uh, uh, from the uh, subgraph space. So uh, have we tested if Web3 gateways work for subgraph indexing? So the cool thing about Web3 gateways is that they work just as any other JSON RPC node, and you can you can plug them in 
uh, directly to, to any other piece of software that relies on a standard JSON RPC connection to the network. So uh, that's something that is uh, uh, out of the box there. The, the other more interesting thing is uh, what it showed our forking technology. That's something that does not necessarily directly uh, have support for subgraphs, but we've seen people made it work. So I would say it's a yes and no question on that. Yes, on the gateways. And then for some of the more advanced tooling, we obviously, there's obviously a bit of elbow grease that needs to be applied to, uh, to make that uh, working nicely. I see a question from Fernando saying, where is it hosted? Uh, so right now, Web3 gateways are hosted in two locations in the world. One is Europe West, so near Frankfurt, and the other one is US Central, so in Iowa. And we'll be closely following up with the uh, EU, uh, with West US and East US deployments, that's one, and then also with the one in Asia. So no matter where your users are, they're gonna be covered. Hope that answers your question, Fernando. Yeah, and I actually seen a question. Are there any use cases for this apart from testing? And I'm guessing that the, that this referred to forks. So uh, actually forks, uh, you can use them anywhere you need uh, something that behaves like a super fast network. For example, if you want to deploy your dApp in a playground mode so people can try it out without having to wait for transactions to be mined and so on, or if you just want to uh, simulate how things would play out on a real network, one way to do it would be either to use forks or the simulation API. Another use case similar to the playground mode is actually using uh, forks to deploy your dApp in a Q&A mode so people can try out the correctness of it uh, without having actually uh, all the latency that comes from, from network and from uh, the uh, consensus that's present in the network and it's removed from the fork actually. So I hope this answers the question. then you're muted. Oh. I am actually muted. We can build a distributed node, but they have problems unmuting my mic. Sorry, everyone. So uh, a question is cool, any timeline for this. So in true Tenderly fashion, if you go right now live to your Tenderly dashboard and click refresh, if you haven't refreshed for a while, you will see the tab in your dashboard and this is available on, on all Tenderly accounts right now. And I guess there's one on the early adopter plan. Uh, so if you upgrade, if you upgrade to the gateway early adopter plan, do you need to continue to utilize the Tenderly Pro plan? So the way we the way we uh, created and tailored the the Web3 gateway early adopter plan is to give a chance for people coming into the Tenderly ecosystem to have something something more to play with when it comes to when it comes to the Web3 gateways. But uh, at the end of the day, if you're on the pro plan, you should be having uh, better quotas than, than those uh, in, in any case. I unmuted myself this time. So uh, a question saying how DAP, uh, how useful are simulations in DAPs? So uh, DAPs, Andre mentioned we're a generic platform. So tenderly as like a piece of software doesn't actually know or care what you're actually doing inside. And because of being a generic, pla uh, generic platform, teams have been doing amazing things with the simulations. I mentioned the InstaDAP example of when you come to InstaDAP, you actually don't have to even connect your wallet. You can click try in simulation mode. And suddenly you have your own Ethereum mainnet, Polygon mainnet, or wherever you are actually transacting your own. They give you a hundred free ETH for you to play around. And you can try, try out the, uh, the whole application with all of the production APYs, all of the production quotas and everything else. Another one I mentioned in the presentation is safe. So checking every transaction, what will it actually do before sending it on chain? And then also a very, very cool one for dApps is if you're testing out your dApp, instead of testing out on a testnet or testing out on in production, wink, quick, nudge, nudge, the good way to actually do it is connect up to a fork and your QA team can test out there. You can run your integration test extremely fast and it's not using it directly inside of the DAP, but it makes the development much more easier and much more safe. And I guess, uh -huh. there's a there's an interesting question of, could you show a demo of a visual debugger? So I think Bogdan, you can do one better. 
if you can paste in the chat an example of the, the visual debugger for people to to click on and play 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 with themselves i think that's a much more interesting example than us clicking around uh, while i grab a transaction maybe we can handle one more one more question yeah i can i can i can continue continue with these so uh would all the features be available in a cli context so depending on what we what we are talking about right now whether it's a web3 gateway specifically or the broader uh tenderly platform so we do have a cli uh for tenderly and we do expose uh, a bunch of functionality there that enables you to hook into um hook into tenderly uh from wherever you are developing uh, whichever development framework you choose uh, but then on the other hand, then I'd also demo that you can leverage the Web3 gateways, again, just as you would any other uh, node provider to uh, execute stuff from your CLI, from your script. So there's a use useful uh, curl generator that can that can give you uh, some clues on how to plug that in into your terminal terminal adventures. So I would just like to note for the previous question, Danilo has sent an example for the debugger. And then Fernando also answered, asked another question, is, is can I use the debugger to export the data in real time to a stream somewhere? So if you remember, I mentioned Web3 Actions, which is a serverless platform letting you do anything you want. So it's arbitrary JavaScript and TypeScript fully integrated with the Tenderly suite of tools. So you can connect to the transactions that you care about and ship them off of the platform. You will basically just send yourself a webhook, connect to our queue, write directly to a database. Again, completely generic platform, so you can make the stream yourself and do anything with the data yourself. So that's already available right now. Hope that answers your question. All right. Thanks so much, Bogdan, um, and all of you guys, Andre and Edith as well, for uh, providing these answers. I think we answered like, I don't know, 20, 20 questions there. Um, and we have to wrap it up soon. So that's all the time we have for the questions. Uh, if we didn't get to answer your question live, uh, we'll make sure to email the answers to you after the webinar. But before we leave here today, just a quick reminder that Web3 Gateway is in general availability. It's free for everyone to play around. Um, but for the 1,000 early adopters, uh, they'll get Web3 Gateway for only 50 bucks a month. Uh, forever. So you can check out the pricing page on that for more for more details. Um, and the documentation for Web3 Gateway is also live on the docs. So be sure to check it out if you need uh, help getting started. And if you run into any issues or questions, you can always reach out to our friendly support team at support at tenderly.co. You can also uh, ping us on uh, Discord or tweet at us on Twitter. Uh, big thank you to all of you who were able to make it today. And thank you to Andre from joining us from San Francisco, Bogdan and Anna here from Serbia and Belgrade uh, for being with us today and putting on a great presentation. And thank you all for, for joining us. Um, see you soon. Bye-bye.